Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the world of Pokemon. My name is Ghost, and I'll be here to explain the rules for this new sort of challenge. I'm pretty sure this challenge doesn't exist, because I looked it up. This is what I like to call Pokemon Lifelock. But over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to explain what a Lifelock is, and what the rules are that are going to be pertaining to this challenge. This is similar to a Nuzlocke. If you know what a Nuzlocke is, then you probably have a somewhat general idea of what the rules will entail. However, they're going to make some modifications to some of the normalized rules in a Nuzlocke. There will be some rules that stay the same, but some rules will be slightly modified to make it a little bit more unique. So, without further ado, let's get right into this. First off, we're going to start off with encounters. Wild encounters. In a normal Nuzlocke, you are locked to one Pokemon per route. So if you kill that encounter, or it runs away, or you run away, you won't be able to get a Pokemon for that encounter, or for that route. This is one of the, this is one of the normal rules of a, of a Nuzlocke. This is going to be slightly modified. In this Life Lock challenge, I am allowed up to two encounters. However, I can only select one of those two encounters for my team. The other must be placed in a box. I cannot use the box Pokemon until the Chosen is either knocked out or switched out. I can only switch out Pokemon that are caught within the same route. For example, I capture a Gardevoir and a Groudon on Route 5 and I capture a Garchomp and a Vaporeon on Route 9. I cannot switch my Gardevoir with the Garchomp and vice versa. I can only switch it with the Groudon. All other Nuzlocke encounter rules will apply. So if I encounter, if I, so if I kill one encounter or it runs away or, or, or you run away, that was my first of two encounters. All captured Pokemon must be nicknamed following a specific theme, which will be dependent on what I choose for that challenge in particular. The duplication rule from a normal Nuzlocke will remain the same, which means I cannot capture the same Pokemon in any given evolution family, even if it is knocked out. For example, I can't capture an Umbreon if I have an Espeon, and I cannot capture another evolution in form, even if Espeon is knocked out. The only exception to this rule is if I capture an Eevee, if I capture an Eevee as my first capture, like it's the first capture I have for that evolution family, then I can choose who it evolved into, but outside of that, I cannot capture another Eevee, I cannot capture another member of the evolution family, I'm, stu I'm tied to that, to that Pokemon. The Pokemon Death Rule will also remain the same here. If a Pokemon gets knocked out in battle, I cannot use it anymore. It must be put in the PC, or it must be released. This also applies to Field Poison. In the applicable games, I'm not quite sure which game this stops at, um, but in the applicable games, if a Pokemon succumbs to poison on the field, they are dead. They can't, there's, no, there's no exception to the rule. They're dead, they need to be boxed. I'm not quite sure which generation this stops at, because the later generations stop that. Um, so I'm not quite sure which generations that still applies to. So we'll see how it, go how it goes and go from there. Next up, it's typings. Which means, no cheat sheets for me. Now, this is solely a thing for me. This is the purpose of making things harder for me personally. Now, this might not be an issue for you or anyone else that might be watching this video. Because of my terrible memorization skills, aside from the more obvious typings such as water, fire, grass, ground, um, there are some typing matchups that I'm just not going to remember. There's, there's, se there's several matchups that I struggle to, uh, to deal with. For example, I have trouble remembering what's effective against dark typings, and what Psychic is weak against. I'm not allowed to look up a typing chart that documents what is effective or weak against what. So basically, I will be winging it, which is pretty much what I normally do anyway. 
so that's gonna be fun for me. Now, this, I guess, like I said, this rule is gonna be applied mainly for me. This may not apply for you or anyone else. This is just for me. To make it a little bit more challenging for me. Next up, it's trainer battles. In a normal Nuzlocke, battle rules are set are put to sets, which means you can only switch out during battle. There is no switching in between Pokemon. This rule will remain the same, so that's not going to be changing. So it's, it'll be add a little add a little bit of an extra degree of challenge for me, since um, well, I've never done this type of challenge before. <laughs> Next up will be general battle information. This rule, as I understand it, is dependent on the player. Some people use items in battle, some don't. For me, I will be using items. However, there's going to be a limit to how many I will be allowed to use in any given fight. Inclu this in also includes random encounters. The following is the list of items by category and how many times I can use them. The first one is restoratives, so this is anything like potions, hyper potions, full restores, lemonades, um, soda pops, or whatever they're called. Anything that restores anything that restores HP, I am only allowed to use it up to four times in any given fight. If this proves too much of a leeway, like if this makes it a little too easy, I will bump it down to three times per fight. For example, if I use a hyper potion. I only I only have three charges left to use for that fight. So if I use another hyper potion and two full restores, which which equal up to four, I cannot use any more restoratives in that fight. Revives are not allowed to be used in any situation because you know the death rule. So all revives and max revives have to be sold or never used. Status heals. Category number two, uh, Paralyze Heal, Antidotes, Awakenings, anything that recovers a status effect, I can only use up to three times. So if I use one Antidote and two Paralyze Heals, I cannot use another status heal in that battle. Now, as a special note, uh, I, think the I think Full Restores not only recovers a Pokemon's HP, but also cures their status effects. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a full restore. Because of this, a full restore will consume a charge for both restoratives and status seals. So, that's gonna be a little interesting. X items are not allowed to be used. They cannot. They have to be either sold or just completely forgotten about. Any berries that, that recover HP or heal or heal status ailments are not affected by this item restriction. So I can use as many berries and status heal ailments. Or any berries that I want, which is going to be interesting because I've never, I've never really, <laughs> I never really use berries, so this will be an interesting rule for me. The held item leftovers can only be equipped to one Pokemon at a time. So if I get, if I find leftovers in a trash can, and I find leftovers in a in a random item somewhere out in the field, God, God knows where, I cannot use it. I cannot use that second one. Now, something else to note with held items. If a Pokemon gets KO'd when they're holding said item, whether it's a berry or a type boost item or leftovers, they remain with the Pokemon. You cannot remove it if they're KO'd. If they're if they're still alive, you can switch it out. But if they if they if they're knocked out in battle or from fuel poison, you cannot take it off. They're de they're, they're stuck with their dead bodies forever. So keep that in mind. Next up is the level cap. In a normal Nuzlocke, you are locked to certain levels depending on the next gym leader or, in some cases, the rival's ace. I'm not quite sure how many people follow that one in particular. Um, usually, from my understanding, it's always like the gym leader's ace, but some people do go, go as far as the rival's ace as well. Um, this rule will remain the same, so which means I cannot exceed the level of the gym leader or maybe the rival's ace that might change we'll see how it goes um, but definitely the but definitely the gym leader's ace i cannot exceed the level of the gym leader's ace and if it exceeds it i cannot use it until i beat that respective gym 
or rival if I choose to use that if I choose to use that rule set. Now with gym battles, this might be an original rule for me. It might not be. I don't know. I've never seen a Nuzlocke type challenge that uses this type of rule. Um, so if this is new, great. If not, well, I'm using I'm, re I'm reusing it. When I find a gym leader, I have to use the same number of Pokemon as them. So for example, the first gym only has two Pokemon. Then I have to only have two Pokemon on my team. If I exceed the amount of Pokemon that the gym leader has, I have to box them. This rule will carry through the train barriers inside the gym as well. If this tra gym trainer only has two Pokemon, I'm locked to only those two Pokemon throughout the whole gym. Now, the caveat with this, with this rule, if this proves too difficult or unfair, I will adjust it to allow as many Pokemon as I want for the trainer gym battles, but not the gym leader battle. So, we'll see how it goes, we'll play it by ear. And finally, as a special note, the only exception to this rule is during the Elite Four. Since most, if not all, the Elite Four members carry, I think it's like, what, up to five Pokemon? Uh, while, the gym, while the champion carries six, and the fact that you can't leave during the Pokemon cha League challenge, I can't box the Pokemon. Which means, um, I am going to be using a full team for the Elite Four, regardless of the rule. So, that's the only exception to, the, uh, to that rule. It will not be changing, so we'll see how that goes, how that pans out. And yeah! That is the rules for my Pokemon Life Lock. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. We'll see how it plays out. And these this rule set these rules will probably apply to every other Life Lock type challenge that I probably end up doing in the future. We'll see how we'll see how this goes. And uh, some rules might be changed. Some rules might be added. We'll see what happens. If they're added, I will make an update video about this, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's my rules. Stick around, and wait, and find out, and see how this plans out, and we'll, uh, we'll get through this all together. So thanks for coming to watch, and I will see you in the world of Pokemon. Later.